Hi everyone, it's Wednesday Warriors and it's me, Ariel, and today I'm going to be talking about body flaws. This is something we've talked about in different kind of ways over the last few years. I did a video last year about appreciating your body. And I've done many videos about body image topics, about appreciating your body, about focusing on what you do have instead of what you don't, things like that. I also would like to direct you to a video that was slam poetry that I posted two weeks ago for the We Are Freedom Fighters video for Wednesday Warriors, and it was called Insecure. And the reason I'm addressing that video again and putting it out there as a link in the info box for this video is because as part of the topic for this week on body flaws, we are meant to sort of talk about our own body insecurities, um, body flaws, and how we overcame them or what we do to deal with them. And I, I direct you back to the video called Insecure because it's my little tale about being insecure and becoming not insecure. And as I put it, becoming sure about myself and my body and my persona and the way that I look, among other things. The thing about body flaws is that people consider them flaws when they either don't match up to their standards or they are different than other people or they are just plain too hard on themselves. And I, I think that everyone has flaws. Even the people that we deem the most beautiful have flaws. And if we can learn to embrace our flaws and stop calling them flaws, just calling them attributes, the way that we are, us. Um, I don't look like you and you don't look like me and we shouldn't look like each other. We should just celebrate who we are and, and that's the end of the story. But we all know it's not that easy sometimes. So in my video, Insecure, I start off talking about how I used to be insecure because my hair was dark instead of light. And it's, it's true. When I was a kid, when I was a little girl, I was influenced by television, as many kids are, and I really wholeheartedly believed that as I grew up, no one was going to want to date me because I was a brunette instead of a blonde, because on TV, all of the popular girls that everyone wanted to date were always blonde. And I realized that this has changed a lot in the last several years. And obviously, even popular girls are now all kinds of uh, ethnicities. Definitely, there are still a lot of improvements to be made in that area. Don't get me wrong. But things have come a long way since the 80s when I was a kid and I was watching TV and I was impressionable and I believed things. And I really remember this specific thing of blonde hair versus dark hair. Um, and feeling insecure about it because I remember when I was in elementary school and there was a show called Saved by the Bell, which I'm sure many of you know and many of you probably love as I did. Um, and one of the main characters on the show was a brunette and she was captain of the cheerleading squad and she was the object of affection of the main character. And all of a sudden I was like, wow, she has dark hair like me and she is the go-to character. She is the one that everyone wants to be everyone wants to be friends with. She's the one everyone wants to date. And as silly as the whole premise of that is and as silly as my notions of it are and as insignificant as that show is in the long run of anything, the fact is that it had an impact on me and it influenced my little young mind to the point that a show that finally had a girl with dark hair being the popular girl sticks out in my mind. Another thing that I go on to talk about in my poem, Insecure, is that I was insecure about my woman's body. And I characterize my woman's body as having breasts and hips. And while I've always been on the slender side, I used to be much too thin. And I always wanted to be the thinnest person, the thinnest girl, and I really also used to strive to have the same body type as my mother because she was someone that I loved and respected, and she was someone I looked up to, and she was an adult woman who it just seemed natural that I should want to be like, but what I didn't get in my young head was that I could be like her 
in so many senses, but it didn't mean that I had to look like her, and it didn't mean that I had to have the same body as her. And to be perfectly honest, we don't have the same body type. Um, people used to say that we did, but it was because I was starving myself, and it was changing the appearance of my body. It wasn't my body's natural way of, of wanting to be. My mom is beautiful, but she is taller than I am, and she is thinner than I am. And her body type, her body frame, is just more slender than mine. I am pretty petite as far as body type goes, but I'm average height. I'm 5'4", and I do have breasts, and I do have hips. My body doesn't go in a straight line. And for me to try to make my body be that way, even though it is beautiful for some people, it's not the way my body wanted to be. I had to manipulate my body and hurt my body and starve my body in order to make it be more like my mom's body. And because of this, I felt insecure. And even though womanhood was always something that I appreciated and that I wanted as I grew up, I didn't necessarily want everything that came with it for me. I was afraid of having breasts. I was afraid of having curves. And while I'm not the curviest woman out there, I do have curves and I think for me there wasn't a disgust for that and there wasn't a distaste for that. There was just a fear of that. I was afraid of what came along with being a woman. And over the years, you know, I, I became no longer afraid and I was able to embrace it and I was able to be sure that my body was beautiful just the way it is, just as so many bodies are beautiful just the way they are. There is no one definition of beauty and there shouldn't be. And then the last insecurity that I talk about in my poem, Insecure, is that I was insecure because I was smart. My intelligence held me back, but sometimes it held me back because I let it hold me back, because I didn't want to be made fun of for being a nerd, and I didn't want to deal with all of the things that sometimes go along with having a voice and being intelligent. And I wanted so badly to be more than just a pretty face. But sometimes being smart, especially when you're a girl, isn't seen as cool, isn't seen as fun, and isn't seen as the way to be. And I really had to recognize that there isn't one way to be. And if people want you to be a certain way, and it detracts from your true self, and it means that you have to dumb yourself down, or you have to stop being real and stop being authentic, then you really shouldn't be around those people in the first place. And the world at large will love you for who you are as long as you're confident in yourself and you love who you are. The beautiful thing about the universe is that there are so many people who can appreciate your talents and qualities and gifts. And even though you may grow up with people who don't and you may come across people that have hate or are jealous or hurt you or don't appreciate you there are people out there in this beautiful world that can appreciate you and they're really waiting for you so it's important to remember that if you're having a hard time right now finding people that are suited to you finding people who would be quality friends finding people who can appreciate you for the person that you are just wait a little bit longer, go searching, try to expand your circles, just wait for those moments when you can embrace other people and really feel embraced in return. Now I know all of the things I mentioned are not body flaws, a lot of them are, but some of them go beyond body flaws. I don't believe in flaws. I don't, I don't like the word flaw because it has negative connotations and I don't like people thinking that there are parts of them that should be different in some way. I have learned along the way to really embrace who I am, who I am physically as well as who I am emotionally and mentally and spiritually. I'm not saying that you have to love every single thing about yourself because it is a hard journey to take and sometimes it takes a while to really love yourself 100% but at the very least don't hate certain things about yourself. There is a middle ground where there are you know there are things that you hate about yourself and then there are things that you love about yourself and the all or nothing attitude is you hate everything or you love everything. 
you don't have to love everything about yourself. It would be nice if you did. I want you to, and I hope for that for everyone. But there's a middle ground in there where if you can't love everything, at least don't, don't harbor any hate or resentment towards yourself in the way you look either. You can sort of say, there are some things that I love about myself and the rest of the things I can live with. But you don't have to say, there are some things I love about myself and some things I really hate. Um, really try to work with that hate because it holds you back. That's what it does. It holds you back. It stops you from being confident. It stops you from being happy. It stops you from feeling fulfilled. And it stops you from spreading your energy and your focus onto other more important things when you're obsessing over the little things that you can't change anyway. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.